Packers group field. BC Lions middle linebacker Solomon Elamimian is 10 tackles away from making CFL history with three games to go. He has 121 total tackles on the defensive side of the ball. And the guy he'll be chasing tonight for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers is Paris Cotton coming off a 108 yard rushing game on 14 carries versus the Calgary Stampeders. Mike O'Shea's Bombers in must win territory looking to snap a seven game losing streak. Only Western opponent they have beaten is BC. Mike Benavides gave his team a full week off to recharge on the bye week after snapping a three game losing streak against Ottawa in impressive fashion. Third beating. Bombers won 23 6. Lions won 26 9. And here we go with Ricky Schmidt set to kick off. David Studemeyer back in the bomber lineup, and he'll take the kickoff from his 11. And gets chased back. Jamal Johnson downfield and good cover, along with Clark as Drew Willie leads the Bombers out after being hurt the last time he faced the BC Lions. Now second in CFL passing yard, Drew Willie at over 3,500. There's Paris Cotton, his 108 yards rushing against the Calgary Stampeders. His second Major start foul. since the team went in a different roughness. direction. We BC, just watched number 45, Nick Grigsby in Hamilton. And Glenn January is going to start at left tackle here tonight but may not make it through the whole game he's really banged up he's going to try and gut it out but we'll watch and see if he can go from start to finish our starters to watch are brought to you by napa auto parts where custom advice comes standard uh, penalty against veteran jason iraqi will enhance the bombers field position up to the 39 yard line is where they'll start with cotton taking the handoff off the left side and he gets drilled after a couple it made by Jabbar Westerman. Solomon Elamimian, 10 tackles away. He's had double figures in tackles for five games this season. There's a candidate for outstanding rookie and Alex Bazzi off the edge. And Adam Big Hill just behind his partner at linebacker and Solomon Elamimian. He's got 67 takedowns this year. Elliot Mimim with a 12 tackle game against Winnipeg earlier this season. Willie on second down and Ryan Phillips dropped what would have been his 40th career interception. Been a tough one to get for Ryan Phillips. He's had some opportunities and oftentimes the veteran they don't even opposing offenses won't throw in his direction but over the last couple of games, he's had some opportunities, and that number 40 is tough to get to. 178th consecutive game for Ryan Phillips. A couple of interceptions on the year, one against Winnipeg, and Hyra Lahu boots it away. Kiola Antolin, the return man for the Lions, and he's got a good return up over the 35. Flag comes down on the return. Kevin Glenn leads the BC offense onto the field. Former Winnipeg quarterback playing in his first game here at his investors group field. And it's a holding call against BC. On return, illegal block, BC number 20, 10 yard penalty, first down. Couple penalties already for the BC Lions in the kicking game. Yeah, Keenan Parker this time. Kevin Glenn gets back in the lineup. Manny Arsenal at receiver, 796 yards for Arsenal and seven touchdowns on the season. There's Antolin who's on that last return. What a big game for Ernest Jackson, their last outing against Ottawa. Direct snap. Antolin trying to get outside. And he is. Taken down at the 25 yard line. And not much there. Your defensive starters to watch for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Ian Wild, maybe the most consistent defender for the Bombers this year. Greg Peach has put together a good campaign. Seven sacks, 46 tackles for the defensive end. They're going to move Deja Dunn from linebacker back to halfback replace Demond Washington. 
No gain for Angela. It's second and ten. And the swing pass is read beautifully by Deisha Dunn. As he takes down Lavage Tuane, who had an impressive debut against Ottawa. Well, that's why I wanted to make Deja Dunn a, a guy to watch tonight because he's moving and playing in that halfback spot and just see how he handles some of these big receivers. Deja Dunn is only 5'9. He's going to be up against guys like Manny Arsenal and Lavage Tuane. Good tackle there in the open field. So, two and outs for both teams to start. Ricky Schmidt sails the punt. Studemeyer at his 42, trying to get outside. And has a seam across midfield. Studemeyer back in the lineup, and that's why Winnipeg's anxious to get him back. Big return of 33 yards for the speedster, Damon Studemeyer. Man, when we come back, the Bombers will be scrimmaging in BC Lion territory. Studemeyer <laughs> with the big return. The 13th big return for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers on the season. And Drew Willie set up first down at the Lions 34 yard line. And they give it to 34. Paris Cotton straight ahead. Kareem Smith with first contact. Adam Big Hill on the tackle. Cotton with the big game last week against Calgary with 108 yards on 14 carries. Yeah, he's got two starts now. His first start was against the Edmonton Eskimos and only saw the ball eight times in the run game at 31 yards. And Michael Shea said, well, we didn't give him the ball enough to give him a chance to take a look at him. And he had a big game against the Stampeders. Second and seven. Big Hill shows blitz. Here he comes. Will he in trouble? And Big Hill gets home. Fifth sack of the year for Adam Big Hill. Looks like we're in for a defensive night. Yeah, Adam Big Hill lines up on the line of scrimmage, basically trying to cover down a tackle, maybe free up Alex Bazzi off the edge, but he just beats his man. Just straight speed from the linebacker. Number 44, Adam Big Hill, is fifth sack of the year. So Liram Hiralahu on to attempt a 45-yarder. And this one is through. Bombers strike first as Hyra Lahu now 34 of 38 on the season. Tribute in Ottawa last night. And they sang the Canadian national anthem here loud and proud as well in Winnipeg. There's Antelum. Gain of three to four off the left side as the BC Lions scrimmage from their 35 after the Hyderlahu field goal. You know, these back to back days and a tough time for the country. It's, you get these sporting events as a chance for Canadians to get together in their communities just to stand together, show the resolve, and show the respects. And we hope that it's a bit of a distraction or at least begins the healing. Second down, the Lions stay on the ground, and Ian Wild shot the gap and brings down Antolin. It's back to back, two and outs. Here's a flag on the play. See what Kim Murphy's crew has. Man, it's going against BC, likely to be declined. And it's Holding the Bombers. BC, number 63. That penalty is declined. It'll be third down. Right tackle, Javon Olafioye. The holding call. There's Ian Wild. He's on the four game injured list and just came off that injured list and just registered 10 tackles in his first game back. Not only is he a player to watch, it's fun to watch him. Here's Stoudemire again. Oh, nice. Big contact as he gets brought down by Roley Lambala. Lambala trying to wrestle the football away, but it's Winnipeg ball and Drew Willie back to work. Number two in the CFL in passing yardage. Trying to bump a bomber slump. Please, Paris Cotton making his third start and coming off that 
100-yard plus game against a pretty stingy Calgary defense. Yeah, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have struggled running the football this year. They're dead last in the league in that category and defending the run. Paris Cotton got that 108 yards. It was the first game in the last six that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have been over 100 yards rushing as a team. So they feel like they've improved in that position with Paris Cotton back there. First down, 43-yard line, play action fake, and there's Clarence Denmark, and he's still going inside the 40, and Denmark finally bumped out at the 30-yard line, and with that, should be enough for his first 1,000-yard season. Nice yards after the catch to get over that 1,000-yard mark. I love how he runs this slant route hard. He knows there's danger area. I mean, Solomon L. Mimi and Adam Big Hill are in the middle there. He doesn't care. Right across the middle, Drew Willie hits him on time, in stride, and that should put him over. It does. Now with 1,003 yards, his first 1,000-yard season, second in the league in receiving. And now the handoff to Cotton, but this play doesn't get off as Kim Murphy's crew has whistled play dead. Now yeah, only the second player in the CFL so far this year to be over 1,000. Darius Bowman leads the way for the Edmonton Eskimos. And then Asai, Winnipeg, number 84. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Robbie Bryant offside. Clarence Denmark is in first place in receiving yards for the rest of them. And a Darius Bowman yeah. is in another planet. Different category. Yeah. But a coming of age season for Denmark. Just one touchdown, and that touchdown against the BC Lions. Yeah, back in July. It's been a while. First of 15. Willie sets up. Got him. Oh, a ball came loose. That's the newcomer. Justin Wilson drilled by J.R. LaRose out of Delaware State. Welcome to the next level. <laughs> and J.R. LaRose just puts the hard hit on him. Now, my question is, did he catch it and fumble it out of bounds? Did he have possession of this long enough to make it a catch and a fumble out of bounds? No challenge. Then it will be second and 15. Here comes the pressure. Willie gets it away underneath. And Wilson does now have his first CFL catch. Some heavy hits from that top-ranked BC line defense. Yeah, and Drew Willie looks pretty good. He missed, missed last week. He's put some, thrown some nice balls so far. It's like, I mean, he's had a tough year. He's been banged up big time all year long. This is an offensive line that's given up 60 sacks, worse than the league, and Drew Willie has taken the bulk of them. Knocked out of the last game against the BC Lions and then injured on Thanksgiving Monday in Edmonton. Here's Hyra Lahu from 30 yards out. And this one is wide. So a rare Hyra Lahu miss. Marco Iannuzzi will put a knee down and concede a single point. And the Bombers have a four-point lead first quarter. Well, they paid tribute to the legendary coach Bud Grant this week in Winnipeg. Four cups in ten years as the architect of a powerhouse in Winnipeg and with more of Bud Grant let's join Sarah Oleski. Well Chris certainly if you're going to honor someone from the Bombers organization from their history Bud Grant you couldn't pick a better one the winningest coach in franchise history before he went down to the NFL and for years was down with the Minnesota Vikings a member of the Canadian Football Hall of Fame the Pro Football Hall of Fame he is now 87 years old he was on hand Thursday morning for the unveiling of the bronze statue a number of his former players were also at the ceremony and one thing that Grant said was this represents a tradition and to be a good organization you've got to have tradition this is just the first step for the Bombers next season they also plan to do more to honor those that have had a significant role in their organization and still keeping tabs on his old team here's Ernest Jackson behind coverage 
And a little sidestep for more yards, and Jackson taken down at the 26. So picking up where he left off two weeks ago against Ottawa when he caught a season high 195 yards worth of passes from Kevin Glenn. Yeah, and he, he is just all of a sudden become this deep threat and you match him up with alongside of Manny Arsenal and all of a sudden this BC Lion receiving core looks pretty dangerous. In behind coverage here again. The last couple of games just shy of 300 yards for Ernest Jackson. 94 on against Hamilton the week before. Drew Willies. Old target with the University of Buffalo. That's a 48 yard play in the Initial first down of the game for the Lions. Kevin Glenn back to pass again. Pocket collapsing. Flag comes down. A sidearm pass that SJ Hedera can't make the grab on. Let's check the flag. That play extended so long. Opted holding is the issue offensively. Fourth consecutive game that the BC Lions have the same offensive line. They feel it's starting to gel. But a holding call here. Holding. BC, number 69. Legal contact on the receiver. Winnipeg, number 13. Penalties with offset. We'll replay first down. So, Andre Ramsey and Don Namba called on the play. Well, because that play didn't happen, then let's go back and look at the play that did. The Ernest Jackson play, and he gets down the seam again. And this will stretch the defense, too. Back up that bomber secondary a little bit for the BC Lions. They should be able to hit those intermediate and under routes now with the speed of Jackson pushing the DBs back. That's his seventh big play of 30 yards or more. Antolin, little cutback, big room up the middle, and a spin down to the 10-yard line for Keola Antolin, who had 157 in his second start against Ottawa two weeks ago. Jamarcus Hardrick. And the guards up front do a nice job, but I love the patience from Antolin once he gets the ball. Rolling the ball in the backfield, fullback. He's going to go against the grain here, make that cut on Ian Wild, one of the great tacklers for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Bounces outside of him, picks up nice yards. First down, Antolin again, left side, touchdown. A 17-yard touchdown or run and then a 10-yarder to the end zone for Keola Antolin. Boy, he got some help up front on both of those runs. It was the inside Jamarcus Hardrick that helped him on the long run, and now on this touchdown, it's left tackle Andre Ramsey. Watch how he gets out and gives the corner to Antolin. He just turns Ian Wild inside and shuts the door so that Antolin has a running lane. You're right, that offensive line, Chris, is settling down nicely over the last couple of games for the BC Lions. Not just in pass protection, run blocking as well. First rushing touchdown for Antolin. Paul McCallum adds the extra point. Four play drive, 75 yards. And Andrew Harris, the Winnipeg native, congratulating the man that's taken over in his absence, Keola Antolin. Stephon Logan's getting close. Almost ready for this one. Probably for their next game against Edmonton. Antlin's going to go down there now. Probably thank all his receivers for their help and, sure, and certainly that offensive line because that was one heck of a block by Andre Ramsey on linebacker Ian Wild. And we don't usually show the extra point again, but Paul McCallum has just hit 3,000 points in his CFL career with the convert. So the odometer clicks over for the number two score in the history of the Canadian Football League. Now he's got a ways to go to get to Louis Pasagli. Likely won't get there, but what an accomplishment. And you consider over a 100 year history of this game. And there is number two all time. By the way, they're going to honor Louis Pasagli at a luncheon, Grey Cup week, November 28th. Carl Volney on the return up to the 30 yard line. See how the Bombers respond after that touchdown drive for BC. 
Well, let's take a look at the big boys going to work up here. This is that long run by Antolin. I want to show you left guard Jamarcus Hardwick. Look at him just wash down a couple of bombers inside. I mean, he opens up the entire left side. And then on the touchdown run, it's the tackle, number 69. He's going to get that reach block out on 38, Ian Wild. He, he, he just opens that lane for Antlin. The big boy's got it done there. Bombers start at the 30. Start with a two-back offense and a throw for Denmark. Incomplete as he was covered by T.J. Lee. So it'll be second and ten. The Bombers had difficulty with the Lions the last time. A season-low 144 yards of offense against this Lions group. Second and ten. Cotton releases. Six receivers out for Willie. And he does some dancing, and he gets tripped up and taken down by Solomon Elamillion. Gets his fifth sack of the year. And the coach mentioned before the game that we might see Elamillion get to the quarterback tonight. Yeah, he's, he, they, they got him in that defense. And Coach first, Coach Benavides first went over there to congratulate Solomon Elamillion on this sack. They've been showing their linebackers up on the line of scrimmage, both Adam Bighill and Elamillion. Look how he hesitates. Sits there and then he's spying Drew Willie. He realizes that basically just covering grass at that point. So go ahead and go get him. And he gets his fifth sack. So Big Hill, Elamimian, both with sacks in his first quarter. Here's Marco Iannuzzi. And he ran through the arm tackle and up over the 45 yard line. Good field position for the Lions with just under four and a half to go in the opening quarter. His last game versus the Ottawa Red Blacks, BC Lions, won that game in a blowout 41-3, and it was quite a show that Ernest Jackson put on. It was the best game for receiver in 2014 at 195 yards on eight, eight catches. It was the all-go all night. Best game for a Lion receiver since G. Roy Simon yeah. had 211 back in 2007. Feed Antle in the football again. And he crashes to the 50. Has about three. And Antolin is going to head to the sidelines. In a second and long situation. Second and seven from the line, 50 yard line. Four receivers to the far side. Glenn has to do some dancing, may take off with it, and gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no further with another flag down. Nobody open for Kevin Glenn. Yeah, that was all about the back end, the defensive backs that. Locked down the Lion receivers. Glenn had holding BC number 63. A penalty is declined. It'll be third down. I, I want to go back and show you Jamarcus Hardrick on that first down play for the BC Lions and watch him working on Greg Peach and how physical up front he is becoming. Left guard position. He has just taken Peach and he drives him into the ground. Snap was a. Uh, an awkward one to handle for Ricky Schmidt here, Studemeyer, and he gets wrapped up, and Roly Lamballo has another special teams tackle. And back to work goes Drew Willie. 250 yards in his first start against PC, a victory, and then cut short in his second game. 10 of 15 for 88 yards before Kareem Smith ended his night. Yeah, you know, this this time of year, you know, a lot of times we talk about must-win games when they're really not must-win. This is must-win. This win. is must-win. For the Winnipeg Blue Bomber. They lose this game. It's a playoff hopes are gone. The BC Lions win this game. They are in. That's what's on the line tonight. Bombers need to win out and get some help. Willie over the middle in Denmark. Reached back, but couldn't bring it in. 
And the BC Lions continue to shut the door when it comes to giving up majors. This defense has gone 51 possessions. 5-1 without giving up a major. No touchdowns in five of the last six. No touchdowns allowed in six games this year for Mark Washington's group. Flag down. Looked like they were offside. A little shovel to Cotton. And Cotton slowed up by Big Hill. And out to the 40. He's got a first down. So they'll decline the penalty if indeed BC was offside. I love the way Paris Cotton runs the football with that low pad level. I mean, he's already at 5'8", so he's not outside. exactly... BC, that penalty is declined. First down, Winnipeg. Not exactly one of the tall running backs in the game, but as small as he is, he still gets his pad level down. I mean, look how he, he'll lower his pad level there. He feels the contact coming. He gets that pad level down nice and low. So if you got it, you got to get up and underneath them to get any kind of leverage. This is the guy that everybody was impressed with in the preseason and got injured. And Nick Grigsby took over and didn't relinquish the starting job for quite some time. Up to the 45, so it's going to be second and six for Mike O'Shea's group. One thing they haven't tested or, or taken a look at with Paris Cotton is, is how he is going to catch the ball out of the backfield. I mean, just one catch in his last two starts coming out of the backfield. That's something that Nick Grigsby did quite well. Second and six. Willie pocket collapsing. Eric Taylor will wrap him up. And bring him down. Check that David Menard has the sack. The University of Montreal product gets home, and that's three sacks in this first quarter, and now 63 surrendered by Winnipeg on the year. Boy, right, let me show you what Drew Willie will see when he watches the film of this game. If he hits Paris Cotton, he's covered by Solomon El Mimian, who runs into his own man, and Cotton is wide open in the flat. That was the design of the play. He catches that one, turns the corner, and probably scores. Ira Lahu's boot has Ayanuzzi backpedal to the 16. But a good return up to the 30-14. Ayanuzzi brings it back with a minute to go in this opening quarter. Ian Wild has 61 tackles for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers defensively. He's also among their league leaders or their, their team leaders in special teams tackles. So take a look at one of the great linebackers in the game going to work. Tough to catch your breath after that too. You got to be in good shape. Cover that punt and then go and start on defense. Double tight ends. Well, Little mix up there. Oh, oh, and Ernest Jackson gets drilled. Big hit provided by the corner. Matt Buckner, who played in every game on the field corner for the Bombers this year. You know, he has, and he's played well. You know, early in the year, the first three games of the season, teams tested him. They went after him. He had about 20 tackles in those games. I believe it was 17 total. But he, he was there. He held his ground at that wide side corner. He didn't more than hold his ground on that play. Three for Jackson, second and seven. And the Lions looked like they were offside. Procedure. BC, number 55. Five-yard penalty, second down. Well, Hardrick... Moved early, looked like the receivers were beyond the line of scrimmage on the waggle, but they called the left guard. I think Jamarcus Hardrick is just trying to hit somebody. He just, he's, it doesn't matter. He's going after people tonight. Should be the final play of the quarter. Second and 12. 
And Kevin Glenn to the sidelines as the catch made. Didn't make the catch. Incomplete. Former Bonner Keto Pablo unable to hang on. So we're through 15 minutes here. Bomber scored first, but then Antolin went to work after a big play to Ernest Jackson. And after 15 minutes, it's 7 4 BC. Keep doing your thing. Ground game again. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers just two carries to Paris Cotton for 11 yards, and the Lions have the edge there. Antolin, 30 yards. Rushing in that first quarter. This is still an issue for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and right now overall in the record for teams that outrush their opponent is 60 and 9. This has become sort of the run game season and that's been right. an issue for Winnipeg. The other issue protecting Drew Willie and three sacks in that first quarter. Well and and that run game can help you in that regard because now you go play action. You freeze linebackers any blitzers have to hold off on the play action because they're not sure if they have to tackle Paris Cotton or not so. It's really where the edge is so far. Ricky Schmidt's boot Studemeyer at his 31. And he'll get dropped. A crazy Antway this time with the. Tackle on the teams for B.C. 16th game start for Drew Willie on the year. Brian Brom last week suffered a broken thumb. We saw Robert Marv in the fourth quarter and he made an impression against Calgary, but Drew Willie ready to go and he has taken all the reps this week. 20th career start for Willie and one and two against the BC Lions. Sweep to Denmark and the turf monster gets him before Josh Johnson takes him down. The flag on that, a late flag. So Josh Johnson and Solomon Elamimian race to get there after Denmark went down. I'm wondering if there's going to be a unnecessary roughness. Major foul, unnecessary roughness. BC, number 56. 15 yards from the point of the original line of scrimmage. First down. It is against Elamimian, the 19th time the Lions been charged with unnecessary roughness this year. Well he's he's getting called here because he puts his shoulder into Denmark when he's down and kind of jumps on him rather than just tag him down. All you have to do is touch him and he's down by contact. That one not that vicious. He's really adjusted the way he plays still with all the tackles he's made. He's adjusted the way he plays from now to about three years ago. Well, he looked one way, second option, and overthrows everybody. Ryan Phillips, closest man to it. Pass intended for Robbie Bryant. Solomon Elamimi, and it looked like Drew Willie wanted a crossing route, and this time, rather than go after the quarterback, which he's done, this time he drops into coverage and gets underneath the primary target for Drew Willie. So Elamimi holds his ground there. Now look at him drop aggressively over the middle. Takes away that crossing rope from Denmark and no one's open for Willie. So second and ten. Bomber 54 yard line. Willie flushed once again may have to take off with it and he's got it first down. Lunging across the 45 yard line. Ball came out at the end of the play and Willie a little slow to get up. Boy, his season this year reminds me a lot of Mike Riley with the Edmonton Eskimos and just how you could see that competitive fire in him. He did those little things like Willie did there to dive for the extra yard and a half, two yards to get the first down and keep his offense on the field. Alan Mike Riley a year ago took a ton of hits like Riley a year ago. They found their quarterback in Winnipeg. 12 yard run moves the chains back in the hands of Cotton. Cut back there and into the grasp of defensive tackle Eric Taylor. It, it's going to be hard to run against this Lions defense, but the Bombers have just got to stick with it. They, you know, even though that was only a yard, yard and a half, and they're going against Solomon Elamimi and Adam Big Hill. I mean, they, just to move Eric Taylor out of the middle is a job in its own. 
But Marcel Belfay has got to keep that balance in there. Keep that defensive line and blitz and linebackers looking at Pierce Cotton for a split second to give Willie that split second to throw it. Lions show a three man front. Second and long. Here comes the heat. Willie's pass is dropped. Incomplete in and out of the hands of Denmark. Not a chance. They put Justin Wilson on the roster here tonight. And Mike O'Shea wanted to take a look at him. Aaron Kelly is not on the roster. Some speculating that a drop similar to this one from Clarence Denmark is one of the reasons that Kelly didn't make it to the active list for this game tonight. Happens to the best of them. Ira Lahu looks for the corner. Wobbly kick is fielded by Iannuzzi. And he brings it back to around the 15 yard line. Timeout on the field. Lion football, when we come back, they have the lead. Well, not in the lineup, but a little bit of a warm up for Travis Lule prior to the game. Let's get an update on his status from Sarah Orleski. Well, Chris, no doubt the BC Lions are hoping that he will be able to be, be be able to be back in the lineup at some point soon. He's only played one game so far this season, spending the season on the injured list. He's still on the six-game injured list, but he is able right now to participate with the team. He did some light throwing, did a couple of plays with the offense this week. Mike Benavides is telling us that it will be based on how Travis Lule feels. Because Travis has been through this before, Benavides is optimistic. But he said that he will lean on Travis to let him know when the time is right. In the meantime, a veteran quarterback at the controls just hit Ernest Jackson and Johnny Sears with a heavy hit on the Lion receiver. Took the worst of that. Yeah, I did my own little survey before talking to some of the Lion staff, talking to a couple of players, including Travis Lule, and tried to get a feel for whether or not he may be able to return this year. Big to Antolin, downfield, it's a first down grab. Ernest Jackson with the catch, up over the 35-yard line. You know, they're getting better protection up front, and Kevin Glenn has been playing better of late also. So they've got the veteran there, but for Travis Lule, you know, I, after my survey and talking to a lot of different players and staff for the Lions, I got a sense that he will be back before the end of the year. If you're going to put a percentage on it, I would say just under 80 right now, but getting better every day. Antolin left side, dropped at the 40, close to three. Will Smith there on the stop. First five BC drives tonight, four two and outs in the four-play 75-yard touchdown drive that Antolin capped with the touchdown run. The BC Lion team could be a very good playoff team. They got to get in first. They got to win tonight. They get in. Once they're in the tournament, you take a look at some of the talent they have in the receiving court. They add Stephen Logan to the mix. They've got some talent out there to do some damage in the playoffs. And if defense wins championships, yeah. they're in the conversation. There you go. Kevin Glenn downfield wants Arsenault, and he can't get to it. Bruce Johnson in tight coverage on Manny Arsenault. Yeah, he was a question mark right up to game time. And doesn't look like he's running with that same explosive speed and power that he normally runs with. So clearly not at 100 percent. I mean, not pretty much not one player in the game is at 100 percent at this point in the season. But he's been a bit banged up over the last couple of weeks. Missed last game against Ottawa for the BC Lions and doesn't look 100 percent tonight. Windy day here in Winnipeg, but you wouldn't know it at this stadium, but this. Able to shield the wind and really has been a factor in the kicking game. As Studemeyer brings it back over the 25 yard line. And so Paris Cotton and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers check back in on offense. Trying to cut into this BC Lion lead here in the second quarter at IGF. Willie hands off and Paris Cotton's got something off the right side. Second level to the run away from J.R. LaRose who just pumps it out. 
Well, you talked about the running game. What a first there by Paris Cotton. And it's a 39-yard run. You know, Chris, our, our producer, John Hines, just in my ear said, man, does he make himself small in the hole? And that's exactly right. That's what I'm talking about with his low pad level and how he can make himself small and just slip through there. And then once he gets on the other side of that hole, he's got that acceleration. Put it into another gear. Good block by Jace Daniels, the right tackle. He played left tackle for the injured Glenn January last week. And here's Willie to the sidelines. And Wendell Bryant with the catch and a late hit yeah. from Tory Williams. Yeah, they'll tack on some extra yards here and late hit. No question about that. Robbie Bryant out of bounds. And Tory Williams. The two-hander in the back. Major foul, unnecessary roughness. BC, number 13. 15 yards and into the play, automatic first down. This time, Drew really wanted to get caught out of the backfield again, but he was covered down well by Josh Johnson. So he goes to the next level, and there's the penalty. Next level being Romney Bryant gets that one foot in. Clearly out of bounds when he gets hit by Tory Williams. Well, first down and go. Bacon into the slot <laughs> was Pombry off. It's, it's a pretty good contact on the fake up the middle and the fullback comes up with a catch. Paul Brion that comes up and he has to battle with this one. He starts out here. This is a play a lot of teams run in the CFL where you run across your tight end almost. Your, your, your wing back almost will come across the formation, get out in the flat. And it's tough for linebackers to track him. And then he fights this off, gets around the corner, so his big arms over it. NPC has not allowed a touchdown in the last 53 possessions. As that line stiffens on that play and sets up second and goal. Boy, Eric Taylor, he set up camp about four years, four yards behind the line of scrimmage. And he was right in the backfield with all that blue paint all, all over his helmet already. Only one team has scored a touchdown in the last six games against BC. Bombers trying to score here, second and goal. Willie calls his own number and he'll get tripped up and brought down by Westerman. And you can tell that the Lions know that stat. They know that they haven't given up and exactly how long it's been since they've given up a major and you could see their intensity turn up even a little bit more when they got backed up in their own end like this. Double team on Jabbar Westerman and beats it. So Hyra Lahu from 17 yards out. And the game is tied. But the Lions deny the touchdown bid as Westerman makes a big play. Lions as they try to claw their way out of the basement. Four in the first half. That's the most they've had in the game this year. Bar Westerman, David Menard, Adam Big Hill, and Solomon Elamimian. All have sacks. Tackle for a loss for Eric Taylor on that last Drew Willie drive. On the doorstep, but still can't get the major against this BC defense. 64 sacks against the Bombers this year. Willie has been sacked 11% of his dropbacks this season. But the game is tied at seven. As Kevin Glenn goes back to work on offense. Last time the Lions played against the Ottawa Red Blacks, they rolled up 31 first downs, 545 yards of offense. Mm -hmm. Bombers have been a lot stingier tonight. Well, you, you've heard about quarterback efficiency rating. It's a complicated mathematical formula that takes into account all of the quarterback stats, basically. Kevin Glenn's quarterback rating against... 13 minute in the huddle. BC. It's a 10-yard oh. penalty. Remains first down. Lions had one too many out there. Boy, there's been a lot of penalties in this first half against the Lions coming off the bye. 
But against Ottawa, Chris, that 41-3 beatdown, Kevin Glenn's quarterback rating was 154.1. Now, perfect is 158.3. He's playing better. Tenth penalty already against BC. That's the most in four games. But Antolin, little room off the left side before Johnny Sears brings a halt to that run. Brought in Danya Namba and Johnny Sears at the outside linebacker spots to help beef up that run defense. Yeah, they got to get better. That was a focus all week, but it really should have been a focus all year. Ranked dead last in the league. Giving up 133 yards a game, but their last 10 games, it's been more than that. Seven for Antelope, second and 13. Lombardo stays in the block. Glenn downfield, and Sean Gore unable to reach that with Matt Buckner in tight coverage. And Labossier, two, two and a, and Sean Gore were too close to each other. That's not how routes are set up because you don't want to have one defensive back be able to cover two receivers. Trying to use that whole 65 yard wide field. Someone ran in the wrong route there. So five two and outs for the Lions in this first half. You mentioned the penalties that's hurting them too. Second fewest two and outs on the season. Studemeyer fields it 45 yard line. And he gets level. He got mowed down by Jason Araki. <laughs> wow. Who came into the game needing just three to hit the top ten all time in special teams tackles. That might be one of the heaviest he's delivered. Absolutely. Studemeyer just kind of dancing and he gets rocked by Jason Araki. 20 special team, teams tackles for Iraqi coming into the game and uh, one with some emphasis there. <laughs> he felt the effects of that too. Just another day at the office. <laughs> Willie, oh, will fake and he's going to have to throw this away. There is a flag over there where Drew Willie was looking and is this the 11th penalty against BC? And they're pointing in the Lions' direction. Pass interference, BC, number 78. 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. David Menard, the defensive end, must have grabbed somebody coming out of the backfield. He tries to sniff out this <laughs> receiver screen and he goes and tackles Clarence Denmark. First down and the handoff to Cotton. Room up the middle for Paris Cotton and another first down. Well, they just got to ride this horse. They play blue bombers every time they give it to 34. It gets this crowd up out of their seat a little bit. You just get the sense that when they get it to Cotton, that he has a chance to break it. It looked like he was caught in the backfield there and somehow made Menard miss and looked like he broke through a bit of a face masking penalty too there that wasn't called. 15 yard run, he had four 10 plus runs against Calgary. And good positive yards there as he cracks it down to the 25 and has seven or eight more. What you can do now, you're, you're in second and two or three. Now the entire playbook opens up for Drew Willie as they creep closer to that goal line. Will this be the drive? The Lions finally give up a major. Good looking first half for Paris Cotton. Well on his way to a second consecutive 100 yard game. Aubrey on the backfield, two backs, and he'll lead the blocking for Cotton again. And he's got another first down. 
He, he, he looks like he's tough to tackle because of his low center of gravity. I mean, it's it's hard for Solomon Elamimi and Adam Big Hill and, and even more so for guys like Alex Bazzi and Eric Taylor to get down that low to get in the midpoint. I mean, look how small he makes himself. So first down inside the 20. Four receivers to this near side. Fake to Cotton. Willie has a man open. Touchdown. Clarence Denmark into the end zone against the line defense that finally concedes a touchdown. Willie gets the time he needs here to allow Clarence Denmark to run that corner route, and, and he does a nice job of it, too. He got court parts all turned around and had about four yards on him. Well, he's got the formula. Second touchdown of the year for Denmark, both against BC. One of the most successful. Mom, ladies, happy birthday. Yes, sir. All right, Mom's birthday. Convert does get through. One of the most successful drives, but it was the balance in the, in the drive that was most impressive with Paris Cotton doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And then Clarence Denmark finishing it off with that real nice corner route on, on Cord Parks. I mean, it's going to be straight man. Usually is down here. And watch how he gets to that corner on Parks. From the fourth receiver to the wide side of the field. Parks just sits on it, leans into him a little bit, and then gets the separation. Watch how he's going to lean into Court Parks. A little stem there, just a little lean. Get that leverage, get that little push to the outside. And now you're four or five yards open. Just a matter of not if your quarterback has time. And Drew Willie really had all kinds of time in the pocket there. And the streak ends for the BC Lions. In the last seven games, only Ricky Ray and Drew Willie have touchdown passes against that Lion defense. Willie's second touchdown pass in five games, 14th on the year. And the Bombers have the lead. Iannuzzi on the return. He's been good tonight. He's got a block. And he's across midfield. And finally bumped out by Chris Randall. But Marco Iannuzzi has his best kick return of the season. We hit the three-minute warning. It's the Bombers with the lead. But a good response here for Iannuzzi. As Keola Antelope leads the blocking downfield. Blitzing of the Lions. It's been effective in this first half. But BC trails. Have a first down after the 60-yard kick return. And Antlin goes to work. Antlin had that nice block on Marco Iannuzzi's big kick return. And Iannuzzi, he, he looked back to see, like, where is he? Iannuzzi's got up in the line. Now watch how Antlin stop it there. Antlin's looking back. Where is Iannuzzi? Well, he's right behind him. So Iannuzzi gets him a little push. Hey, man, go get somebody. Go get him. And Antlin says, I'll take the kicker. We'll go up, we'll take the kicker, let's get the corner and take this thing down the field. That's a nice return. Also saw a nice block by Jabbar Westerman. 60 yards for Iannuzzi. John Beckian with the short yardage group here. And plunging off the right side and should have a first down. You know, Marco Iannuzzi has been taken out of the starting lineup offensively. He's not starting the series with Keto Pobla at that wide side. But that's how you get back into the starting lineup. You got to go back on the teams, contribute, play great on the teams, and you get back into the offense. And that was a big return and a big play for Marco Iannuzzi. One of his biggest on the season, I think. And he's playing with some confidence tonight, attacking the football that's in the air. Yeah, a couple of good punt returns. Yeah. He and Studemeyer have both been effective tonight. One back in, first and 10. 26 yard line. Antolin and drop. Johnny Sears shoots the gap. And dropped Antolin for a loss. 
like Mike O'Shea's comments. He said Sears brings a little ferocity <laughs> to the defense. Well, he does on this. Hey, he just beats the block. He's going to come. He's up. He's not in your screen right now, but he's coming from the left of it. And he, you're right. He just shoots it and beats the block of the receiver outside. It looked like that was Manny Arsenal. Four receivers near side. Trouble with the shotgun snap, but he gets it away and has a completion. And it's Sean Gore with a catch and a first down for BC. Sean Gore had four catches against Ottawa, but he was the number one target a lot more than that. I talked to him briefly before warm up here tonight and I asked him about you know where he is in the game plan now that's a pretty good reaction by Kevin Glenn just to get this one out of there. And he said yeah he's becoming more of a primary target really looking forward to that chance and that opportunity to maybe make some more big plays. Gabe Gore first down prematurely he comes up just short about a foot away from a first down and again the short yardage group checks back in for the Lions. So third down and inches for John Beck. In behind Matt Norman. Dean Valley, Jamarcus Hardrick and company. And a good plunge, and he'll get it easily. I'll show you on that short yardage how they have motion before the BC Lions. And, and you know, some football fans may say, well, "Why do that? Why, why have this type of motion when you're just going to go quarterback sneak here?" What they're hoping to do with that is just to maybe widen one player. You see, Deja down there, he just sort of. He saw the motion. He took a half step over there, and that delays him from hitting the hole on the quarterback sneak. And Carl Jones just throws that motion in there just to maybe influence one guy. Former Palmer quarterback. Well, they're having problems getting this play down. Running out of time. Got it away. Here comes pressure, and Kevin Glenn's going to throw it away and yeah. reset. Yeah, that's, that was trouble from the get-go. Boy, was it ever! And it, it was it was Manny Arsenal in the backfield, and he didn't look like he was sure exactly where to go. That's why they break the huddle here. Kevin Glenn's looking at Arsenal. Okay, you're the tailback. Now you're going to wait a minute. No, you're not supposed to be the tailback. You're supposed to be over here. We need. And then he just pushes Arsenal. Says, you know what? Just go line up and slot. That, that didn't have a chance. Yikes. Greg Peach put on the heat and Kevin Glenn wisely throws it away and they'll look at second and ten. Getting louder in here. Another low shotgun snap into the end zone and overthrows two and a incomplete. Prior to that visit to the red zone, the Lions were 12 touchdowns in their last 13 visits, but had a little trouble in their communication on the last two plays. Well, Matt Norman's having some problems too. Lately, the Bombers put three right in front of Matt Norman, and that's the third bad snap for him, third low snap, and it's throwing Kevin Glenn off a little bit now. I mean, he misses a wide open Lavashier two and eight on a corner row. So Paul McCallum will try to bump the number over 3,000 points. 3,003 now as he puts three more on the board for the Lions and it's a 14-10 Blue Bomber lead with 48 seconds to go here in the first half. Boy, just so small little breakdowns that one play on first down that just was unorganized for the Lions coming off the bye. And that ends that drive they have to settle for the field goal. Two tackles so far for Solomon Alamimian in this first half. He needs 10 to break the J.C. Sherrod record. Number two. All-time best single season tackle total. He's moved ahead of Calvin Tiggle in that department. Draw play, Cotton. And he's got another big run. He'll get tackled from behind. Balls out. And it looks like the Lions get on it. 
BC football, they'll review it. Alamibian comes up with the recovery. That's his third fumble recovery of the season. And the only question was cotton down, and as is the case, all turnovers are reviewed. Josh Johnson with the strip of the balls out. A little tighter shot, tighter angle here. Josh Johnson's coming in your screen now, and ball out. And 56, first of about three lines to get to it. Taking a little longer look at this. To backside touch the turf before the ball bounced out of his hands. Try and slow it down. They've switched it over now. And Kevin Glenn's out there. Not much doubt. No, it's, that's a fumble. And we have confirmation from the command center. 39 seconds to go. Lions with the ball, 53-yard line, taking a shot for Jackson. Got it! Inside the 10. Another big play for Ernest Jackson. I'll tell you what, for defensive backs, and most of them around 6 foot, 5'11", to about 6'1", you're trying to cover. It's like it's like trying to climb an oak tree to get to it, to get to the football with, with Ernest Jackson. I mean, he, he's only listed at 6'2", but he's a thick 6'2". And that time, Bruce Johnson just couldn't climb that oak tree. 42 yards. He's over 100 at 115 in the first half. Antolin off the left side. And Ian Wild with the tackle. Sets up second and goal. Five catches for 115 yards for Ernest Jackson in this first half. Coming off 195 <laughs> and only 94 in the game prior to that. He's almost at 400 in two and a half games. Who does he think he is? The Darius Bowman. BC. Lions call a timeout and they got a decision to make here. And it looks like they're going to make the decision to take points. So time was the issue. Yeah, no way he can squeeze one more play in at two seconds. And in hindsight, maybe the run play on the first down yeah. was not the right call. Yeah. But you, you catch a gap there with Antolin. Great decision here, though. By the way, no question. Take the point. Take the point. 15-yard attempt to get within one, and they do that. And it's a one-point bomber lead halftime. Some impressive running by Paris Cotton and Ernest Jackson putting up some numbers as well. 14-13 Winnipeg as we check in with the former bomber coach, Paul Apolice. Thanks, Chris. Tonight, yeah, let's talk GMC coaches playbook. I brought a guest here, Jock Climby. He's going to talk a little run game, but I want to start with the BC Lions pressure package. They've sacked Winnipeg four times, three of them in that first quarter. Winnipeg hasn't done a bad job, 179 yards total offense, but when you give up sacks, it's hard to keep drives alive. Stephen Morley, in a five-man protection scheme, he's gonna have to pop out here. He starts to pop out to Big Hill, but then they twist back inside. Very hard for the right tackle. Nice scheme for BC. The next time, it's they drop out, but I think Drew Willie holds the ball too long here. Solomon L. Maney, Mitman has enough time to break this down. And then again, you get a twist here. So you'll watch, you see the rush come inside, the tackle coming around. And again, Drew's holding this ball a long time. You'd like, I think the lineman would like to see him get the ball out of his hand sooner, Jock. But, uh, you know, you tell me what you're seeing. Well, I'm, for defense, I mean, I don't normally watch the running game a whole lot, as you no, know. But know. Glenn, Glenn Suter was talking about how Winnipeg is dead last against the run. And so I wanted to have a look at why that would be. And really, it's because Winnipeg doesn't focus on run defense. Let me show you what I mean. BC has got two running backs in the backfield, but yet only six men in the box. The seventh man here, I'm showing you, would normally be in the box thinking run. He's not. He's thinking pass. And that's why BC absolutely rips him here on first down. Same thing. It's first down. Now, two back set. What does that normally mean? You'd want seven or eight in the box. What does Winnipeg have? Only six guys in the box. Seventh guy, 
thinking pass defense, which is strange because you'd think down by the goal line on first down, you got to expect the run, and yet Winnipeg is playing as if they're going to get a pass. This is one of the big reasons why Winnipeg is dead last so far in the league. And what is everybody in the world thinking? Oh, my God, Jock Climby is talking run game. Oh, my God. Rod, what do you think? <laughs> What's happening here? I think that's our oh, my goodness for the week. We'll decide that a little later on, Coach. Right now, a lot to be decided in Winnipeg. The Bombers led by seven, a couple of late field goals. For the Lions, we had a one-point game and a must-win for Winnipeg in the CFL and TSN. 15 of these 123 receiving yards for BC. This guy is a huge weapon for the Lions. And how about the sacks? Winnipeg's given up the most sacks in the season with 60, already given up four tonight. Winnipeg's one touchdown scored by Clarence Denmark. Here he is now with Sarah Oleski. Well, Clarence, so far, Seth, you're, oh, you hit over the 1,000-yard mark for the season. You get your second touchdown, both of them coming against BC. What was the key on that drive? Uh, we just wanted to score a touchdown. You know, we got down there a few times, kicked some field goals. We missed a, missed a field goal. We just want to score and finish with touchdowns. This is a must-win game, and we've talked about them throughout the season, but this is literally a must-win one. What was said in the dressing room heading into this? I mean, we just got to go out and do it. You know, we know that we can beat this team. We know we can play well against anybody. We just got to come out and execute. What did you like about the first half? Uh, that we moved the ball well. I feel like we had some big plays and big runs from Paris, and I think if we can continue to build on that, we'll be fine. Thanks, Clarence. Thank you. In Toronto, 14-13, Sarah Oleski standing by with Ernest Jackson. So 195 yards for you last week, 115 yards in just the first half of this game. What's the secret to the success the last game and a half? Uh, no secret. I'm just executing the plays. The coaches ride, ride them up and uh, run my routes the best way I can. Down by one heading into this second half. What's going to be the key to get this Lions offense going with some consistency? Um, we just need to stay focused and make sure we got um, our, our team up on the line right because we, we've been having penalties because of uh, substitution, little things. So if we take care of the little things, we're going to be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Now at Ernest Jackson in his last six quarters, 13 catches, 310 yards, a touchdown, five of the catches for 40 yards or more, and 62%. Wow. Getting it done. I mean, he has emerged and is the deep threat Kevin Glenn's been looking for. But he's right that focus those little small mistakes they're making that are stopping drives whether it be a penalty on first down puts them in first and 15 or first and 20 or just substitution errors. We saw that one play they couldn't get called properly clock management right yeah. at the end they settled for three knocking at the door. You think that is the result of coming off the bye? Well, and, and some changes in the lineup. New, new faces in there. An illegal kickoff by Hyra Lahu to start this second half. So Illegal kickoff. Winnipeg number 70. Be first down on the 45-yard line, BC. So, so BC will start with good field position here in the third quarter. Yeah, that's a severe mistake since about, I think it's about 80 years ago now that they changed that rule that you kick it out of bounds. That position gets the ball in the 45 yard line. Good field position. Third quarter has been a bit of a mystery for the BC Lion offense this year. Just 47 third quarter points, although they did have 10 in their last game against Ottawa. And a pass on first down and going to go deep to Sean Gore. Tried to come back for the football, and it's incomplete. Matt Buckner was running with Gore down the sidelines. It looked like Sean Gore sort of accelerated, and the timing of it when he did accelerate threw him off a little bit. He's all by himself, basically, down here on the numbers. And you're going to see him. He kind of accelerates right now, and the ball's thrown a little bit behind him. By the time he finds it, he's run past it. Second and ten. Lombardo stays in the block. The pass is caught, but it will be short of the first down. Onamba brings down Jackson after his sixth catch. 
Well, the punt team will have to come on third and three. Another low slap, a snap here from Matt Norman to Kevin Glenn. And, and watch how the quarterback now, when you get those low snaps, he, got, he has to take his eyes down and put them down here for a split second, then get them back up. Now he completes this pass. It's short of the first down. They're going to have to punt it, but those snaps can come back and hunt the BC Lions. They've got to get that straight. Smith line drive punt, and that one bouncing past Studemeyer, and a little backspin keeps it in play at the five yard line. A flag comes down, and Lombala helps wrestle Studemeyer to the turf. Well, that's a pretty good placement right there. Terrific kick. Not much the Bombers could do with that. I mean, you hoping that that one, if you're a Winnipeg Blue Bomber, you're hoping that one bounces into the end zone and you give up a single. No yards. BC number 45. Five yard penalty. First down. So five yard, no yards against Jason Araki. One of the unsung heroes of that great cup year for, for Saskatchewan was Ricky Schmidt. And then a lot, of, a lot of people haven't talked about that, but his punt placement, hang time. It's very important and, and hey, rarely talked about. 55 yarder, eighth time he's pinned an opponent inside the 10 this year. And Willie. Trying to get out of the hole with a completion to the newcomer, Justin Wilson. Second catch for Wilson, who was spotted at a tryout camp in Buffalo. Boy, he, he was a three-sport athlete in high school. Ran track and field. In fact, at one point in his sophomore year in high school, he was ranked the number one high jumper and triple, or excuse me, long jumper and triple jumper in the nation. Dad, a track coach, also a terrific basketball player. That pass incomplete on second down, intended for Rory Kohler, who hasn't had a catch tonight, and it's a two and out to start the second half for Winnipeg. And this should be real good field position. Marco Iannuzzi has a big return in that first half already in this game tonight, and. Kiel Antlin is the other returner back for the BC Lions. Waiting around midfield. Good boot. 48 yard line and Iannuzzi straight ahead. Flag comes down as Iannuzzi returns it to the 50 yard line of the Bombers. That's another call against BC. And it is. So the penalty parade for the Lions continues here tonight. And the terrific field position won't be as good as expected. BC, number 50, 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, we'll take a break. Ernest Jackson has been a big factor tonight. Sarah Lesky with more on his relationship with Drew Willie when we return. It's been Kevin Glenn to Ernest Jackson tonight. In college, it was Drew Willie to Ernest Jackson. And with more, here again, Sarah Lesky. Chris, I was thinking of the exact same line to describe <laughs> it. That is exactly the case. During university, Ernest Jackson and Drew Willie were teammates at the University of Buffalo. They entered university together as freshmen. Jackson said that he was one of the receivers that Willie referred to as the three amigos, being one of Willie's three favorite receivers. Even back then, Jackson and said that he could see the leadership qualities in Drew Willie. The two of them have remained friends and continue to work out together during the offseason. Yeah, Drew was excited about Ernest Jackson's performance a couple of weeks ago against Ottawa when we spoke with him about the 195-yard game. Probably not as excited about the 122 yards he has in receiving tonight against his crew. Small fraternity football you Amazing how many conversations you have with players that, oh yeah, I went to camp with him when we were in Buffalo and played college ball against him. And five for Antolin, second and five. Kevin Glenn, a couple of pumps and gets it to Antolin and he gets away. There is a flag as Antolin is in the bomber territory at the Winnipeg 50 yard line. And 
Tack on some more. Like a late hit on Kevin Glenn. He had to hang in there and wait for Antolin. Or is this going against the Lions? I thought the preliminary indication was going against Winnipeg, but maybe there's more than one to sort out. Offside, BC, number nine. Major foul, rushing the passer, BC, 93. Be a 10-yard offset, automatic first down. So Jackson offside, but Kashan Fraser called for the hit on Kevin Glenn and Fraser's in now for Greg Peach who's out of the game with an injury. Not a good halftime piece. Touching halftime piece and Javon Olafiore was trying to block him. Yeah, Greg Peach not returning to the game as of yet. Could barely get off the field the last defensive series for Winnipeg. First down. And a rare carry for Lombala and the fullback gets tripped up across midfield the Namba in on another tackle just the fourth carry of the year for big 46 and now a Namba Namba just went down yeah. on his own he's been involved tonight made his first start last week and made 10 tackles in that game and while the number gets attention, we'll step out. 10 Easter. He's in business class. So Teak Sherman has taken the spot to Don Namba. And it's second and 10 from midfield for BC. And Kevin Glenn has it tipped at the line. Johnny Sears off the edge with pressure and the knockdown. Another late flag coming here, Chris. Jamarcus Hardwick was in on it. Not sure if he's going to get flagged or. After the play, major foul, unnecessary roughness. BC, number 55. Yeah. 15 yard penalty will be third down. Bombers led the league in URs this year, but it's the Lions taking the bulk of them tonight. Johnny Sears adjusts his angle. He's, he's been in on this blitz a couple of times and just missed Kevin Glenn. This time he adjusts, he attacks Roy Lombal, attacks the block, and then gets his hand up. And let's see the penalty on Hardrick. He's going after people tonight. Whether he's got his helmet on or not. That one bouncing down for Studemeyer. They'll call five yard, no yards, but <laughs> a decent return, which ends with Adam Big Hill flying downfield as he so often does. Double digits and special team tackles for Adam Big Hill on the New year. Yards. BC, number eight. Penalties decline. The gain is greater. First down, Winnipeg. The Bola combo was in the no yard zone. Let's take a look at this and Adam Big Hill and he, he's covered here in the middle lane and watch his acceleration. Studemeyer once he gets the ball in his hands right here. Now he's going to totally accelerate and look at him put another speed and just drive into that tackle. Finding another gear. There's Cotton up over the 40 yard line. The Bombers were most successful in the first half when when he was a big part of the drive. Harris Cotton had an excellent first half. It's kind of forgot a little bit late in the first quarter. Then in the second quarter, Drew Willie and the offense, Marcel Belfe went back to him. He had 10 carries for 100 yards. So back to back 100 yard games for Cotton who will add to the totals here. Look at him shift across midfield and finally down at the Lion 50 yard line. 20 more for Paris Cotton. And he got some offensive linemen down there cruising too. Here he is getting small again. Paris Cotton. Nice cutback. Good field awareness to make that cut inside of Alex Bazzi. And watch these all linemen. There's Morley Z. Jace Daniels getting down there. That's called cruising. Don't hang around the pile 
when a running back is being tackled, one of those big guys will cruise in and knock you out. First down in line territory. They show blitz picked up, and Willie has a connection to Corey Watson. His first catch brought down by J.R. Rose. Another corner first down at 16 for Watson. Nice crossing right here. And Willie just needs the blitz picked up because it's blitz coming. Adam Big Hill's involved. He gets a little play action. Remember that play action to freeze Bazzi? And then he gets the chance to get it out there. And after that play, Ryan Phillips was quite angry. First and ten. Willie looking for Wilson who dives to make the catch. Let's confirm he does. They're going to spot it at the 29. He's now pretty good tonight. He has. And, and, you know, now Clarence Denmark, right after this catch, he... We'll see if it is a catch. Mm. He might have used the... Jones flags out already. Yeah, he might have used the ground to, to trap that football. And Clarence Denmark, he turned around right after that. He saw it. He had that good angle of it. And he looked at the bench and said, snap it quickly. He was trying to get the next offensive play call. I think he knew this one was trapped. Yeah, he just went over to Mike O'Shea and was telling him that exact thing. He was saying, I wanted the snap right away. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is trapped. And you're going to get a shot from BC's that angle. He's challenging the ruling on the field with completed pass. We'll review the play. Yeah, he, 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 he traps that on the ground. What it, Mike, Mike Benavides didn't uh, waste any time throwing the challenge flag. I just thought it was interesting that the Clarence Denmark had the awareness here. He, Denmark's right here. Now he's seen, he's got the best view in the house of this one. He looks at it. Oh, that's trapped. Now watch. He, he gets up and he goes, okay. Uh, and he looks over to the bench goes, come on, okay, let's snap go. it. We got to hurry up. We got to hurry up. Okay, got it. Now, come on, come on, come on, coach. Come on, let's get one call. Ah, too late. Nope. Yeah, no, they challenged it. Yeah. The only problem with that is it still would have been second and five, and you snap the ball without a, a, a proper yeah. play call, and the drive might come to an end anyway. Yeah, and Mike Benavides had the, the flag in his hand as that ball was being caught or trapped in this case. After review, it's now incomplete forward pass. The rule on the field is overturned. It'll be second down and 10 at the 34 yard line. So they'll re spot the football back at the 34. Bombers trying to end a seven game losing streak. Seventh time they've dropped seven in a row as a franchise since 1930. An eighth loss would be the third longest in franchise history. Trying to keep their playoff hopes alive here tonight. Second and ten. Pressure. And Drew Willie made the first two miss, but not the third wave. And down he goes. It's the fifth sack of the night for the BC Lions. Yeah, more of that blitz look where they're going to put either Solomon Elamimian or Adam Big Hill up in the line of scrimmage. And what it does is it, it, it causes the, the Winnipeg offensive line to take a look at that linebacker and then they allow one guy free. This time it's Kareem Smith off the edge because they're looking at 56 Solomon Elamimian. David Menard ends up getting it sack. Willie's been dropped 61 times this year. Menard has two on the night. And from 46 yards out, Tyra Lahu is good. And the Bombers lead by four. We're midway through the third quarter. Former Bomber quarterback Kevin Glenn. Goes back to work trying to confirm the Lions reservation for the postseason here tonight. Lions ask for the kickoff. And Marco Ainuzzi looking for another big one. Might have one across the 50. Running away from Hyrule Marco Ainuzzi all the way for a touchdown but there's a flag back at the line 41 yard line
60 yarder earlier in the half. And a kick return touchdown of 92 wiped out by a penalty. Watch this hit here. I believe it's Alex Bazzi who's going to clip Louis Richardson right in the middle of the back the and right at the point of attack. BC 24. That penalty is declined. Legal block. BC 44. 10 yard penalty. First down. Yeah, I think there was a few. I, I saw Adam Big Hill as well. And, and it was right on the zero as well. There's Big Hill, and he's got Johnny Sears lined up. That one's not necessary because yeah. it's already passed the returner. So take your pick. Chris Randall knew the flag was down. Here's Hansel. Cut back up to the 33 for Keola Hansel. You know, there's a lot of fans who say, you know, stop calling those penalties. Too many penalties. Well, the responsibility is on the players. Stop, stop hitting guys in the back. You, you see the name tag of the player you're trying to block. You let them go, and your and your returner might make a miss. It's unusual tonight, though. The Lions, one of the most dismal teams, second fewest penalties in the league this year, but a boatload tonight. A long second and short. Yeah. But the short team in second and two for John Peck. And he'll try and follow off the right side. And I think he's going to be short just by a foot or two. Had to get to the strike, but the 35. It's an interesting call. I mean, it's, it's almost second and two here, or, or before the snap there. And Mike, for Mike Benavides to take Kevin Glenn out, I mean, second and two is uh, offensive advantage in a big way. And I think they've done that a couple of times tonight now. Yeah, I just, I mean, Kevin Glenn could go play action second and two. I mean, it's, it was just a long one, maybe. Maybe it was right in that bubble area for Mike Benavides and didn't get a generous spot. It's a full or almost a full yard. Third down. So the big boys hunker down and to try and grind it. The two yards out here and Beck definitely has it as he breaks across the 35 and takes some punishment for it. of concern there and coach Mike Benavides remember if you're just joining us the BC Lions win this football game they're in the tournament and it eliminates the Winnipeg Blue Bombers Bombers can keep their hopes alive they're slim but they keep their hopes alive with a win tonight against the Lions Boy, the options are all over the map for the Lions literally they could be a crossover team they could finish second third Fourth and make the postseason. Dropped off for Jackson. See if he can take off with it. Breaks a tackle and now breaks through for a first down before Ian Wild brings him to the turf. But good second effort for Ernest Jackson, who might put another 195 on the board tonight. You know, we, we saw him in the first half show how he uses his size so well on those deep balls. Now he's going to use his athleticism. That was a great play to jump over Johnny Sears like that and try to cut him down low. And he reacted quickly to this hurdle. Seven for 137 for Ernest Jackson. First down Lions. BC 51. Fake to Antolin. And they were looking for Limbala, but he was picked up by Deja Dunn. And it's incomplete. He's done playing pretty well at that halfback spot. He hasn't been matched up on Ernest Jackson. Good athlete. Been a guy who rotated from the linebacker spot to replace Damon Johnson. Look at, look at Bruce Johnson back here. <laughs> uh, Josh Johnson with the, the, the coach. Coach. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to show the coach, you know, if you need a returner or anything. <laughs> 
You gotta have fun. It's an important game. You gotta have fun when you play this game. Second and ten. Uh, yep. The crowd tied down. Yeah. Time count violation. BC. Chalked out up to the fans here in Winnipeg. They've had a few. Absolutely love this stadium. This is this is the this is the model right here. You talked about the wind in the first half. How it's very windy outside of the stadium, but inside you don't feel it at all. And now how it channels the noise down. It is tough out there. Second and 15. Here comes the pressure over the middle. It's caught. Two and a day with a first down. Cut down by Deisha Dunn, but all the way to the Winnipeg 45-yard line. I went and introduced myself to Tuone. He's just going to come across, and, and I, I introduced myself before the game. Just wanted to say hi to him and talk to him about his first game in the CFL, which is this, which was the last one against Ottawa. He had five catches. I thought, nice, smooth run run. Remember, as I mentioned in that game two weeks ago, Tuone was the Offensive player of the game in the Rose Bowl in 2012 for Oregon. He is a player. 19 yard pickup, five catches, but also drew two pass interference calls in that game. Here's Lombala again. Trying to use the bruising fullback. And he's brought down by Kashawn Fraser. Yeah, he talked to Kevin Glenn about 2 on A. This was back to his first game against Ottawa. Drew the PI calls. And he's, a, he's one of those guys that's a nice long stride, but a great route runner. And you feel like as a DB that you got him covered, and he takes one step and he's and he's away from that. That was great aggressive play back to the football. I, I just I think there's great things on the horizon for this guy. Lost Courtney too. Sorry, Chris. Lost Courtney Taylor and Brian Burnham. Another opportunity for somebody else, and there's a catch for Manny Arsenault. Trying to stretch up for the first down. Let's see where they mark it. If it's at the 35, it's enough to move the chains. It's going to be short. Yep. So John Beck is going to come out once again. It's third in the yard as Bruce Johnson takes a knee. When you think about that. You you mentioned Courtney Taylor. He, he won't be back this year, but. Manny Arsenal, who signed a contract extension this year, Courtney Taylor back, Lavasia Tuone, great new newcomer at six foot five for Tuone. You throw in Brian Burnham that was hurt and looked good in his first couple of games. Well, that's going to be a good receiving call. Bruce Johnson getting attention, so we're going to step out. It'll be third and less than a yard when we come back. Consecutive year. Anthony Calvillo here there in Montreal to tie the Alouettes at 18 and it'd be awful tough to get to that Edmonton number. Alouettes with another win this week as they work their way back to 500 and are close to confirming a playoff spot, but not yet. Talk to the general manager at halftime and he's not comfortable yet. Lions have done it the hard way before though. Yeah, I mean the 0 5 here to start the season. So here's Beck in. Third and almost a full yard. And the push off the left side, and he should have it. Beck doing a pretty good job in behind. Big Jamarcus Hardrick that time. Yeah, that, that's the direction I'm going. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's the direction. The way he's been playing and how he's attacking the game tonight. I'm going behind 55 and just say, I, I think I'll take my chance that you're going to open a hole for me. Get, get me at least a yard. New set of downs, and again, it's Lombard in the backfield. Stays in the block. Glenn will swing it out to Ernest Jackson. 
Can't make the catch and Namba read the play and was on the scene. Yeah, he, he's playing well. I mean, I it, you keep noticing number 13 and Namba keeps showing up here. He's going to be one of those guys that you see him enough on the game film. You go, you got to keep him on the field. And he's one of your guys that makes an impression on special teams, bides his time. Yeah. And here late in the year, finally gets back to back starts and does look good. Second and ten. Just get the playoff. And the pass is intercepted. Johnny Sears has got it for Winnipeg. And he'll run roll it. And that's a live football. And Maurice Leggett is going to score. What a play. Sears to Leggett. Touchdown. his knee down just a tremendous break on the ball by Johnny Sears to first make the pick Manny Arsenal was trying to tackle him from behind was his knee down when he pitches this well this play automatically as a scoring play under review and it looks like they may have to bring it back and respot. Benavides wants to challenge, but he doesn't have to. And he wants to make the sure. The play is under review by the command center. Mike Benavides is so convinced that this is coming back, he wanted to yeah. make sure that that convert did not take place. But they all are. Uh, every scoring play is reviewed, so they were automatically going into the review process as Mike Benavides just wanted to make sure of it. Just a great break. I mean, Manny Arsenal didn't get Johnny Sears out of his backpedal at all. In fact, he just sat on that route. And then the question is right here, was the knee down before the pitch second interception of the season for Sears but pretty clear the knee is down and at what yard line it negates or would negate if the call goes as we anticipate it would wipe out a 79 yard touchdown. <laughs> What a heads up play though. It isn't ever being tackled from behind and hit Maurice Leggett like that on what was just a perfect pitch. Except was it knee down? And it looked like it was. But the player was down by contact at the Winnipeg 47 yard line. So a surprise. Look on Johnny Sears' face. Yeah, that takes a little of the sting out of the interception for Kevin Glenn, but well, and it is bomber football. And I wanted to check to make sure that Sears didn't go down on his own there and then pitch the ball because if he was not touched going down, then okay. Now when we take one more look at it again, that's Manny Arsenal. He also gets pushed in the Kirby Fabian yeah. down. Yeah, so that's down by contact. Knee down. Man, the crowd hates it. I see you, baby. You already know what I'm thinking. I see you, baby. Still a heck of a play by Johnny Sears. Has been a difference maker. Ferris Cotton up to the 49-yard line on the final play of the third quarter. In for a finish here tonight. 17-13. Bombers with the lead as they try to stay alive in the playoff race. would indicate that Paris Cotton 100 yards plus tonight. Yeah, got the running game going offensively. The Bombers do, but look at their run defense. The last 10 games has been over 150 a game, and they're holding the Lions to under 100 yards in three quarters. The other problem Mike Benavides has right now for the BC Lions is those penalties. It just in close game, you can't have that many penalties. 
What was your stat going into the week? The team that uh, won the rushing battle was 60 and nine, yes. and the Bombers have the edge, and uh, they have a four-point lead. Yeah, and and you know, big plays made on the defensive side. That interception by Johnny Sears. Those are the kind of plays that that get you fired up. We'll see if it trickles onto the offense now. Second and long, Willie flush from the pocket, steps up, takes off, and look at the toes from Elamidian. But Willie may have enough for the first down, and yet it's coming back on a holding call against the Bombers. And that's how you you kill momentum quickly. Holding. Winnipeg, number 59. 10 yard penalty, the second down. Johnny Sears gets the interception. Exciting play. Drew Willie comes out with a nice run. And Michael Shea knows how that hits you right in the midsection. You get a nice run, you get production on first down, you try and keep that momentum going. The offense is trying to feed off the defensive play, and then you get a penalty. Jace Daniels, the right tackle, who we mentioned graded out well at left tackle last week. So second and long, Willie again on a roll, sets up and fires. What's Watson? And there it is. The interception for Ryan Phillips, number 40 of his career. It's been a while, but it's his third of the season, second against the Bombers, and he might keep that football. Well, first of all, real smart defensive play for the entire group because. They drop the linebackers real deep at second and a bunch, so they know that Drew Willie doesn't want to throw it underneath, and they're just going to back off. Playing a little center field, and he is going to leave Winnipeg with a souvenir. Now leads the team. That's his third on the season, and as you mentioned, Chris, 40 in what has been an outstanding career for Ryan Phillips. And count 40 and count. So they trade interceptions and BC goes back to work, starting at their own 19 wide side. And Arsenal has got the catch, but momentum takes him out of bounds with Bruce Johnson in pursuit. The short gain sets up second and about seven. A lot of two backs for the BC Lions. They're bringing Roly Lombala in there a ton. And Especially on first down, he stays in the huddle. Sometimes he's the only back in the backfield when they bring out two and A as the extra receiver. So multiple formations coming up now from Kahari Jones. He's trying to kickstart this offense a little bit. But can they get lined up right? Just got the snap off. Glenn fires and incomplete. Intended for Gore. Pretty good battle there on the far side of the football field, and it's a 2 and out. No, this is good coverage by Chris Randall because he, he's just going to get up in, in Sean Gore's face and, and watch as, as he goes to make his breakout, he gets kind of physical with him. He's in, he's in that backpedal, and he's making his break, he just kind of grabs him, pushes him a little bit, distracts him just enough so as he comes back to the ball, he loses his concentration, goes through his hands. Short kick bounces at midfield and stops there. Sudemeyer picks it up and he'll get brought down quickly by Pascal Lochard. So Drew Willie has great field position, got a four point lead here in the fourth quarter as he tries to snap the seven game bomber losing streak. Ball they start at the Lion 50 yard line. Drew Willie has a touchdown pass in the game to Clarence Denmark. Fake to Cotton, pumps once, and look out, Cream Smith lowers the boom. And for Smith, his eighth sack of the year. So that's the sixth sack of the night for BC. Just right in front of. Josh Johnson, the linebacker, he just flows down and a little bit of a whiff block there from Corey Watson. Lions best output of the year in the sack department. Second and 14. Anybody home? Look at Sadie goes again. 
They've just rolled seven. And Drew Willie's just taken too much punishment all year long. You can hear the fans with a bit starting to get the boo birds out a little bit. And can't blame them when the most success that this team has had tonight has been when they've involved Paris Cotton offensively and when they decide not to this is what's been happening back to back sacks for Kareem Smith nine on the year so another poised to hit double digits and there's been a bunch this season Marco Iannuzzi can he get outside no Derek Jones downfield to make a good special team tackle what a series for Number 94, Kareem Smith, back-to-back -back sacks. Well, the high on the year, a 10-sack performance by Saskatchewan in the first game of the year against Hamilton, but the Lions up to seven with a team high tonight. And Coming Drew Willing's under siege again. Coming into this game, Willie had been sacked 53 times himself. The Bombers have given up, had given up 60, make it 67 after those rapid fire seven sacks you just saw from the Lions defense. And Five different Lions with sacks and 60 on Willie alone. Menard and Smith with two apiece. Antolin's carry and a stop by Maurice Leggett, Deneen Wild. Well, they've been much better. The Bombers on the on stopping the run. That that has been just a huge issue. Ranked dead last in the league against the run and given up 133 overall, but over 150 in the last 10. And they've been way better. Gary Etcheverry's group, they focused on it this week. It's paying off. Second and six. Antlin stayed in the block, but pressure on, and down goes Kevin Glenn. Jason Vega, he has his fifth sack. Johnny Sears helps this play out by, by eliminating the edge for Kevin Glenn. Vega's going to get there, but just to the right of your screen, I want to show you, just, you'll see it as Glenn tries to roll this way and possibly get the edge and get away from this pressure. Johnny Sears takes that nice wide angle. Now he's got his teammate coming up the middle, and Sears makes the play, turning Glenn inside to Jason Vega. Ricky Schmidt with a punt that skips past Studemeyer. Back to retrieve it around his 35. Now gets headed in the right direction and is brought down at the 50. Now do the Bombers learn from that last offensive possession where they tried to throw on first down, try to throw on both downs, as a matter of fact, go away from number 34. I just, the way he played in the first half and, and in the third quarter, until they stop it, give it to him. Buddy Nick Grigsby now in Hamilton. Paris Cotton was in the Ticat camp a couple of years ago, and Danny McManus filed it away and brought him in this year, and now he's the starting tailback. And they do go to him here. And he's got something off the left side, and look at those shifts, and finally, Weston in the defensive tackle comes back. There is, however, a flag back near the line of scrimmage. Well, you should not get holding. Winnipeg, number 59. 10-yard penalty remains first down. Another call against Chase Daniels. You just should not get holding calls on run plays. Just just go, go ahead and attack your man and, and Give him a hit because your running back's good enough to make a miss. I mean, that, that hand around the outside and the shoulder pads of Adam Big Hill, that's going to get called every time. So first and 20. Probably takes him out of the run game. And Willie throws it intercepted. What a read by Court Parks. Unbelievably his first interception of the year. But did he read that play? Yeah, he, he he had the password. He, re, he read this one and ran the route. 
He didn't come right. He's just off to the right of your screen. And he's and he just runs and, and jumps this this little dig route from Justin Wilson. So slant. Last two passes from Drew Willie have been intercepted. Kevin Glenn trails by four. Under 10 minutes to go. Lion first down. Winnipeg 40. More heat. Got it away. Arsenal. And pass interference. Bruce Johnson there. Boy, that was close. Kevin Glenn at the other end of the play took a shot from Johnny Sears. And he's in some trouble. And Mike Benavides not only out to see about Kevin Glenn, but to tell Kim Murphy he missed one on the roughing the passer. I'm blocked off the edge. I don't know if there was roughing the passer there. Pass interference. Winnipeg, number 25. Point of foul. Automatic. But there was pass interference. Thought this was a close call. Let's have a look. Bruce Johnson. Very close. Very close on that one. Now does the hand get up into the grill just prior to the arrival of the football? Well, yeah, I'm not saying it's not, but it was very close. And Kevin Glenn remains down. John Beck is warming up, but we'll take this free as Maurice Leggett, the safety is there, so Antolin steps up to get him. That leaves the edge open and Johnny Sears that's why Kevin Glenn went down on that hit now he knows there's no safety in the middle so he's trying to hit the hole and that real close call down the middle on Bruce Johnson 28 yard penalty John Peck into the game first down BC can make a first down without scoring a touchdown there's Ernest Jackson runs over a man and touchdown what a night for number nine once again end zone for the Lions as they regain the lead. He is strong. That was, that was a good hit. Catching flat pass and during the break Beck was warming up as quickly as he could put it right on Jackson right there. Randall came up put a pretty good hit on him but he just bounced off that and powers in. Eighth catch 149 yards and a Touchdown for Ernest Jackson, the hottest receiver right now in the Canadian Football League. See, John Beck didn't hesitate to go to number nine, keep him on a roll. And see if he stepped out of bounds. Did he stay in bounds? And did the ball cross the plane? Yep. So in the last three games, Ernest Jackson has 438 yards. In a year where only two are over 1,000, he's almost halfway there in three games. Lions lead by a field goal, lots of time left. Well, the Lions with two games to go, he keeps at it. He might get to 1,000. He's over 700 now. And, you know, he, he is just going to use his strength and size. I mean, we, we've seen how he uses his body to kind of rip down rebounds on those deep those deep throws. There's some of his power. Got to load his shoulder. Took on the hit from Randall. So now, to your point, 269 yards away from hitting 1,000, something that seemed impossible a couple of weeks ago. Hey, uh, Drew Willie told the Lions they had a guy that could make an impact, and he has against Drew Willie's team tonight. Studemeyer from his 11, been dangerous all night, and he'll run it out across the 45. What a big Blue Bombers have found themselves a kick returner, haven't they? Oh, no question. And and I think a running back can certainly look at the bigger picture. 
a quarterback as well. But now Mike Benavides puts it on this defense that have only allowed 18.1 points per game this year, which ranks number one in the CFL. The Bombers sitting at 17 points. By the way, that's the best BC defensive effort in a year in 30 years. 10 points off turnovers tonight. Caught in the head and Big Hill and Eric Taylor the stop. So 10 points off the turnovers, a touchdown after the last interception. By contrast, in the seven, oh, caught in the, on the limp, and that's, she tries to work it out. I was gonna say, by contrast, the, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have just six points off turnovers in their seven consecutive losses. Eric Taylor on his legs with Big Hill hitting him high. Cotton stays in, second and long. Look out, Drew Willie, down again. And it's three for Kareem Smith, and he hits double digits on the season. Ten sack, and his second three-sack game, he had one against the Argos. In fact, hasn't had a sack since until tonight. Yeah, I know the crowd here in, in Winnipeg getting impatient with their quarterback a little bit, but I don't see open receivers for him right now. Take a look at this second look. Go ahead and run it, guys. As the Lions will drop off here. Well covered. Hold it there. Well covered here. Covered up. Saw high man here. Covered at the. They, they are covered down there. That was nice job by the second there. Here's Edward on the return. Got something down the sidelines. And finally dropped by Rilahu. Had to get involved down inside the Winnipeg 40. So. A huge momentum shift. A Willie interception. They score a touchdown. Get a stop and a big punt return, and the Lions are in business with the lead. A couple of good returners in this game tonight. Gil Antlin, one of them. This is big for the Lions because it looks like it's going to be John Beck. So John Beck comes on. Kevin Glenn stays on the bench. Beck has thrown his fourth touchdown pass of the year in this game tonight. A Lions start at the Winnipeg 39. Antolin has a couple. Still taking a look at Kevin Glenn and checking him out. He's got the helmet on and he's going to sit and, and, and watch for a series. Don't be surprised at all to see some pressure here from the Bombers on defense. See if they can rattle John Beck. Gil Antlin is, is getting assistance on the Lion bench. So Limbali in. Maurice Leggett's a little bit low. Second down. And play doesn't get off. We've got a... Flag for too many men or time count? Let's time see. Count violation. Time count. BC number 12. Five yard penalty remains second down. Lions are having some problems. Benny was talking about the, the lower time clock. He felt that there was still time on that one. But the Lions up front are having problems with Johnny Sears. He, he's lining up on the line of scrimmage and they're leaving him unblocked off the edge. He's the guy that's causing the problem and the reason that Kevin Glenn's on the bench for the BC Lions right now. Now, Mike Benavides claiming he called a timeout prior to time expiring. The official that was over getting an earful from him has now gone into the scrum and well, they are going to mark it back. Uh, he's, he was he was pointing the whole time to the 22nd quarter. Yeah, the 22nd clock in the corner. It just looked like to me he thought that there was still enough time there to snap the football. Might have been just as well because Johnny Sears, as you mentioned, coming off the edge untouched. They get it over the heads early, and Keto Pablo wasn't looking. And, and Keto Pablo didn't move to the to the soft spot. This time they block up Johnny Sears with the tight end or the fullback Roley Lombala. And what 
What Keto Pobla has to do is just move out to the soft spot here. He's got inside coverage. There's, in, there's a guy high just out of your screen. Just move to that soft spot and take the hot pass. Didn't even look. Man, the delay of game, probably enough to make sure they don't try a field goal. Would have been a 50-yarder had they not taken the time count. 45-yarder might have been tempting. Instead, McCallum will try and hit the corner. Paul McCallum instead of Ricky Schmidt for the corner here, but it bounces into the end zone. And it will be a single point. A useful rouge, though. Not what they were looking for, but it does give them a four-point lead. Yeah, still lots of time, but yeah, it's it's a major now. Drew Willie's looking for with his team's season in the balance. 624 to avoid being eliminated from the playoffs. It's a long shot at best for Michael O'Shea anyway. Even if they finish and win this game, but want to keep hope alive and take it down to the final weeks of the season. They got to win here. This is a big drive for Drew Will. Again, eight sacks for the Lions tonight. They came in eighth with 34. Anybody home? Look out. Cream Smith. It's got four. <laughs> Can't block him. Hey, he, he's lining up in front of Josh Johnson in that stand-up spot at defensive end. Kind of slides in to get a bit of an angle there on Jace Daniels. Fights him off, throws him aside, and gets to Willie for the fourth time. Well, it's the worst night to protecting the quarterback all season for a team that struggled in that department. Okay. Not another one. They'll throw it away. Avoids the sack, but... The fans delivering their displeasure loudly. Well, he had time initially on this one, but it started to break down. He didn't like again what he saw downfield. Eighth time this year, the Bombers have allowed five sacks or more. Iannuzzi on the return steps out near the BC 50 at the Lion bench. Four consecutive two and outs now for Winnipeg as the offense is stalled here in the fourth quarter. I'll show you the coverage. Lions are dropping back into zone here, and, and Willie's having troubles reading it. They've got five across here, and watch how they just sort of drop back into these zones, but then they kind of lock it up and play man extended here from there. There you go, hold it there. Now you got a man here, you got well matched. That's a play that's a pick throw. You can't throw that one. Coverage at the top, he's got nowhere to throw the football. Under five minutes left now. John Beck remains in at quarterback, quick hitter into the hands of Arsenal. Got a block from Gore. Taken down at midfield, and that's a six-yard pickup for Manning. It's the first time in about four or five defensive plays that Johnny Sears actually dropped into coverage. Lions are going to keep Roy Lombala in there, and I'm sure he's going to try and check track number zero, especially in these second downs. John Beck has... Finished a Kevin Glenn started drive after Glenn was hurt. This is his second drive since. And he's got Keto Pobla, the former bomber gets away down the sidelines. And Pobla has his first touchdown as a BC Lion. Fifty-five yards for Keto Pobla. And John Beck has a pair of touchdown passes in fourth quarter relief. Well, the BC Lions offensively learned from that play when I drew up that Keto Pobla needed to find the hot, find the soft spot on that hot read and just open himself up along the sideline there. Remember, he didn't do it a couple of plays ago in the last series. It went incomplete. This time he does it. Beck sees it. 
drops it into that hot throw, and away goes Keito Pogla. He had 62 yards receiving all season. 55 on that play tonight. As the Lions take control, McCallum's extra point gives BC an 11 point lead. Pretty impressive relief job for John Beck. So here, here's Keto Pogla learning from his mistake early. He's going to come up the field here. And, and when he sees the coverage and, the, and that it's a blitz, he fades away from it and presents himself as a hot read. He, up the field, go ahead and run it, guys. Now here it comes. Now watch him kind of take that inside step, fade into that soft spot. And now John Beck has a, a target. Makes one man miss in the open field. Nice little cut back there, and Keto Pobla is off and running. Former supplementary draft choice of the Bombers. Never got on track in Winnipeg and has struggled in his first year with BC. But suddenly has a play to build on. And how about John Beck? Three for four. <laughs> He's excited. He's <laughs> excited with him. <laughs> yeah, you got to have fun. John Beck, a pair of touchdown passes and three for four, 75 yards in this fourth quarter. Will Smith, one of the up men, takes it. To, they didn't want Stoudemire to have it again. Lions kicked it away from 15. So under four minutes left in a must-win situation for Mike O'Shea and the Blue Bombers. I think the fans want to see Robert Marv. I, I think you're right. Yeah, you, you're hearing the booze. Didn't get the reps this week, though. It was all Drew Willie, who has been their guy all season long. Cotton. But sure I, game. I, I'm going to defend Drew Willie here. And it, this is... You know, certainly there's been a couple plays where he could have thrown it away and, and saved the loss. But we've shown you on three different occasions now when he's been sacked, the coverage downfield by the BC Lions, and, and he just yeah. doesn't want to throw that another pick. So he's he's been bouncing back there in the pocket looking for an open man and couldn't find it. Graham Smith slow to get up, gets helped up. And I'm with you, but the fans at home are saying, or here in the, yeah. the building, watch Robert Marv dance around and escape pressure last week and and make things happen with his legs under duress. And, well, and they got yeah. teased by it, and they don't want to see a little bit more, perhaps. And the backup's a favorite player. Always. always. Second and ten. Got it away. Underneath, Cotton will be stopped short. Elamimian, one tackle closer to J.C. Sherrod's record. And now third down, and you got to leave the offense on the field, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, and that's just his third the third tackle for Solomon Elamimian, which would be a, a season low. <laughs> yeah. Quiet night for the middle linebacker. Remember, he needed 10 to break the record. Now he needs second. And the Bombers need three. Third and three. Trying to keep the offense on the field here. Final play before the three-minute warning. Really, Kohler got it. And a lot more. And Kohler gives the Bombers some life inside the 10. They're not done yet. And now they're cheering, Drew Willie. We hit the three-minute warning. Big play for Rory Kohler. 49 yards, it's first and goal, Palmers, when we come back. Former U of S star Rory Kohler on a nice layered crosser here is keeping the Bombers' hopes alive with this big play. He just has to work his way across the field. Court Parks gets in a chase. That's awful tough to cover that route. And the Bombers keep their hopes alive here. Seven different receivers deployed by Willie, and here is Cotton, and he was drilled at the end of that run by J.R. LaRose. 
Couple big hits for LaRose tonight. And now the big team comes in for Winnipeg, and so does Robert Marv. Well, the Rose knocked Cotton back a couple yards. So second and goal from the two. And 16 in at quarterback. Two backs behind him. Second man through is Cotton. Touchdown! Paris Cotton gets the Bombers a little closer and they'll go for two. Well, he does a nice job, Paris Cotton, of running with his eyes up. I mean, he, he makes a great cut here because the point of attack has 56 in it, Solomon Alamimian. And that little cutback just gave him enough of an angle to, to beat that tackle. Not going without a fight. Go for two here. Try to get it within the field goal. <laughs> Willie directs traffic. Four receivers wide side looking that way. Looking for Romney Brand incomplete. Ryan Phillips on the scene. So there's still five points down, but still time on the clock. Boy, they, the, the veteran stepping up. Robbie Bryant's right here. You just see Ryan Phillips in, in a second. There he is, number 21. Look how he's directing traffic. He's he's making sure Tory Williams knows who he's supposed to cover. He's telling, getting everybody lined up. Then he's got the intended target. Gets out there and gets a knockdown to add to his 40th interception of his career that he got tonight. Just 10 completed passes for the Bombers tonight. Couple interceptions, Phillips and Parks, and all those sacks. Well, this is right on the bubble time for, for Michael Shade as he kicked this ball deep and try and get a quick two and out. But as he go for the onside now. Got John Beck in a quarterback. You wonder if that factors in, although he has I might be two touchdown passes. I might be tempted to kick this deep. I, I would with 220. And, and get your, your defense now. You rely on them to get a quick two and out. And you get decent field position with about a minute to go. Over two minutes. You usually would opt for the long yep. kick, and that's what they do. Of course, this guy's been good tonight. Diane Utsi has provided great field position and has done it again. Up over the 45-yard line. It's his this best has been game. his best game. Yeah, it's yeah. his best game. Marco Anuzzi is trying to work his way back in the lineup, and good for him. And they've been working in tandem, Kiola Hanselin and Anuzzi. And I've seen number one make that lead block and lead him up into the hole on many occasions tonight. But this is Marco Anuzzi's best game. And he's going to work his way back to the offense. He keeps playing like that on the teams. Mentioned Antelope was getting attention. He's back in. But John Beck remains at the controls. Double tight end formation. Low snap. Antelope broke a tackle and rips up eight. I tell you what, that's another low snap. Matt Norman has been distracted up front a couple of times. And John Beck went down there. That one scoots by him. And it could be disastrous for the BC Lions. They try to wrap up this playoff spot. Watch this low snap again. And this isn't the first one now. Beck gets down and corrals it. I, I thought that might shoot right through his legs. Got an injured bomber. Antle had got nine, and the big boys check in. Kirby Fabian and Cam Thorne among the Jumbo team for the Lions as Chris Randall gets attention after the last tackle. Let's check in on the sidelines with Sarah Oleski. Well, Chris, neither the medical staff nor Kevin Glenn have eliminated 
uh, him from the possibility of returning tonight. Both of them said that uh, that it's still a possibility. Kevin Glenn right now suffering from a bit of a headache is really the only update that we could get. But he's had his helmet on the entire time. He's been over speaking with receivers on the bench whenever they've been off. So Kevin Glenn, we may still see him tonight currently down or currently leading by five points with just over two minutes left in the game. And in the TV business, Kevin Glenn was just signaling for Sarah to continue. <laughs> just keep filling, Sarah. Good job. And thanks for the update. Yeah, it sounds like they're taking a look for concussion symptoms. John Beck's done some filling too. Yeah, and a nice job. Three completions. This is two for touchdowns. Sorry, Chris. This is actually a decent scenario. Now the Lions have to get the first down, but they take another play and some yeah. more time off the clock here. We saw them sneaking on second down and two. They sneak on second and a yard and get across midfield, which is what they needed for a fresh set of downs. And now that's what Mike Benavides wants to do, run the clock. Run the clock, and, and while they're going to take the full 20, Matt Norman has got to fight off some mental demons right now because he's been struggling with these snaps. Got to settle in, make sure that his quarterback gets the football. That's his number one responsibility. Antle on the left side gets the edge and a cut back for more. Gets drilled by Johnny Sears, but let's eat more on first down for Keola Antle and back to back good first down production. Wow. Just, just crucial crucial for the Lions because now they go back into that timeout that run offense Winnipeg Winnipeg has to use their timeout now and they can run a couple plays here pound away get the first down the Bombers can't stop the clock again Antlin up to 82 yards rushing on the night Mike O'Shea used his timeout. Minute 29 to go. As the clock running out, perhaps on his season, unless that defense can steal the football or come up with a stop. It's again second and about a yard and a half. And Beck's been good on these sneaks tonight. That offensive line with another good push across the 45 and that should do it behind Hardwick again he's been taking that left side worth mentioning that John Beck's the number three guy on the depth chart for BC and they've kept it going with him here in the fourth quarter in a year where we've seen so many quarterbacks go down John Beck's Kept the Lions going in this game. Now the Bombers season hanging the balance in this play right here. They gotta get him. Send the house. Antelope again. Maybe three. So best case scenario for Mike O'Shea, a stop and Maybe the football back with a half minute to go. About 30, yeah, about, about 30 seconds to go by the time it runs down. And it would be a long field. I still like the strategy to kick off at 227, kick it deep. They just couldn't get the stop yet. Clock training. And Beck a keeper, and he gets drilled. Johnny Sears has been good tonight. Yeah. He has that, but looked like an issue with the play, though, for John Beck. Let's take a look. He, Johnny Sears at the top here, but he, he looked almost yeah. like he wanted to give it to he wanted to give it to Lombala. Lombala there. So Paul McCallum back in, not Ricky Schmidt to punt. To yeah. look for the corner and to make sure Troy Stoudemire doesn't get his hands on the football. 
You know what? Paul McCallum wants, he doesn't, he needs to take, even if he has to take a big chunk here to get this, keep this ball away from Studemeyer. He's looked dangerous tonight. Running it right down, and they'll take the time count. Time count violation. BC, number four. It's a 10 yard penalty. Remains third down. Did that on purpose, and Jason Araki gave Paul McCallum the thumbs Timer. up. That was Please the strategy. Reset the clock to read 25. 2 5 on the clock. Crucial that McCallum gets this. Even if Studemeyer can get his hands on it, he's got to get it in between the numbers and the sideline. If he gives Studemeyer the field, now it's a fire drill. They voluntarily take their 22nd penalty of the of the night, but that will be addressed by the head coach, win or lose. Be a lot more interesting had the Bombers hit on the two-point convert and been a field goal away from a tie. They'll need a touchdown as McCallum with pressure on gets it away. And Studemeyer on the run, but the momentum takes him out of bounds. Wow. Not much he could do about that, but had he been able to yeah. turn up field, he might have had uh, something big. Chris, that, you know what, that, that was a gamble, calculated risk by a veteran kicker to kick it to the wide field and do exactly what they did, get Studemeyer out of bounds. Because if he did get the corner there, there was maybe one tackler and about 40 yards of real estate. Well, the Lions a little slow to get into position here. Right up to the line, Willie throwing it to the sideline, and it's caught by Justin Wilson. Steps up, stops the clock, 16 to go. Try to get it in the Lion territory with time for one shot. Fire drill, fire! Even put one up for grabs and see if you can get a pass interference call. Over the middle, caught Robbie Bryant. 11 seconds left and closer to midfield, a first down, so. Running out of downs, not an issue. Running out of time, likely will be. Two, maybe three plays. Ten yards here and an out, and then take a shot deep. It's Milt Stiegel in the house. Underneath Collard. He goes. gets down at the 50, and they'll have time for one more play. That's exactly what he had to do. Get upfield, get about 10, 12. And then throw it up, hope for the P.I. call. Or just that miracle catch. And even challenge if you don't get it. Yeah, absolutely. And Lions secondary court parts, Ryan Phillips and Tory Williams, a tall corner at safety right now in this pre red defense. One last gasp in the Winnipeg Blue Bombers season. Under duress, tripped up, and fittingly a sack will finish it. That's the tenth sack of the of the game, and J.R. LaRose gets it for the BC Lions, who are playoff bound once again. Great effort by J.R. LaRose. He's actually blocked at the line of scrimmage, fights off the block, and just stabs that right arm at the legs of Drew Willie. Just tremendous second effort, and the BC Lions get a ticket to the tournament. They're in the playoffs. First sack of the year for J.R. LaRose. And again, a 10th sack matching a season high for Mike Benavides crew. Lions move to 9-7 and seven and move on to the playoffs. It's an eighth consecutive loss for the Bombers, who are now 6-11. and 11. Final score, 28-23 for John Peck and the BC Lions. So long from Investors Group Field, MLS Action.